Okay, so the last time we left off, we were looking at the code, and we didn't really understand or really know anything about anything. So what we're going to come in and do then here is we're just going to go ahead and click Build. We're going to click Build Solution just to see what happens, right? We want to know what's going to happen when we go to build it. And so it just it successfully built the project. That's good. Now what we want to do is we want to, excuse me, I'm sorry. We want to go in here and we actually want to compile. So we just compiled this, which is good because it says it was successful, which is absolutely amazing. But now what we want to do is instead of debug, we actually want to, we want to release. So we're going to go ahead and, oops, yes, so we're going to build it. It's probably going to uh, say, yeah, unable to start test plugin DLL. And there's a reason for that. It's because it's not a Windows 32 application. It is a DLL file. So you can't just, yeah, okay. <laughs> um, so that's good. Uh, now, I don't know if you just watched what I did, but hopefully you did. And if you did not catch what I just did, do exactly what I just did or try your best. So basically, literally all that I did was I came up here and I selected release and I selected Windows 32. Now, I will teach you later in more advanced lessons how to compile uh, Windows 64. It's not extremely easy. It's kind of actually a major pain in the ass, but we will cover that at a later date. Right now, the most important thing is getting you from having this pile of trash, complete garbage plugin to being able to actually find out how any of this could be useful to you ever. So what we're going to start off by doing is finding the plugin name, okay, which it's right here. So instead of naming it test plugin, let's name it magic Python. Totally random, just came up with it on my own. And now what we're actually going to do is we're going to search for everywhere where it says test plugin. So like right here, it says test plugin. Let's take that out and put magic Python. So instead of this, let's do magic Python. Let's just, you know, anywhere that it really says test plugin, we don't want it to say test plugin. Okay, let's, let's kind of customize this. Oops, uh, test plugin. So yeah, so all test plugin crap is gone. That's clear. That's what we wanted, right? So now what we can do is we can take this DLL and do some magic, right? So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to run this test plugin file or whatever, or build it, I should say. So literally all that I did is I clicked that. Now you don't really need to run this debugger. What you could do instead, well, what you really are supposed to do is just, um, you're just compiling it. So literally control F7 does the trick. So like, you know, it's set to release Windows 32, and then you could just do control F7. It's going to build you your DLL. At least I'm pretty sure. Don't quote me, bro. But anyways, we're going to go into this plugins SDK folder. And it should be in here under release. You're going to find your test plugin DLL. And you can see that was that just happened like a minute ago, right? Now what you're going to do is go into C program files and you're going into team speak three client. Now we have an issue. Okay. And I am doing this on purpose, by the way, because I want you to know, um, you know, what's going on. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take this test plugin out and it, yeah, there we go. So it worked. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take our test plugin from over here and move it in. Now what we can do is go here, go to tools, settings, options, and whoops. No, actually what we're going to do is go to plugins under settings, plugins. And now we're going to reload all. And now we have an issue, okay? It's showing us in red that it failed to open this plugin. There is a reason, okay? I don't know if you remember, but we only compiled this for 32-bit Windows, right? 
Well, this is TeamSpeak 3 64-bit, which is why it's not inside of the x86 folder. The x86 folder is where your 32-bit Windows installed applications go. What this means is that we are going to close out of this TeamSpeak here, and we are going to go into our browser. So I'm going to pause the video. All right, so right here, we are looking at the downloads page for TeamSpeak 3 on our client. We're going to get the 32-bit version. So just go ahead and tap down. So now what we're going to do is just save our TeamSpeak 32-bit installation, run. Run your 32-bit installation for TeamSpeak 3. Real quick here, it's real simple to be honest. You have to scroll down to the bottom, I guess, and agree to their stupid terms of whatever license crap. So now we're just literally going in and do not install Overwolf. Total trash. Uh, no offense, Overwolf. I just don't really like you. I find no use for you. So here we're going back into connected the uh the private server we're gonna have to blur out the ip address yes uh the r4p3 development team does have a private team speak where we discuss development things but anyways let's go ahead and uh let's go ahead and pause this one sec so now what you're going to notice is that if uh if you remember correctly we put that plugin inside of the um <laughs> Well, okay, so this is the current test plugin that's inside of the 32-bit folder. We are going to need to go into the 32-bit TeamSpeak folder and, uh, you know, do some magic. So pretty much what we're looking at is, uh, if you remember correctly, we moved our DLL over to the 64-bit TeamSpeak plugins folder. Uh, now, I know if you're new to development, this is a little bit confusing, and I'm really sorry that it's such kind of a headache. But pretty much what this means is go back into your Visual Studio go ahead and compile it again control f7 is a shortcut and now you're going to hopefully have um well, i was thinking there would be another dll in there but apparently maybe not I, I don't so let's go ahead and build it and see what happened so refresh okay so there's our dll so apparently when you want your dll just click this play button right it's it's just total magic right so here you go, you have your DLL file here. This is your 32-bit uh, C++ uh, compiled plugin um, for TeamSpeak 3, and it's going to work for the 32-bit client. So in order to get this to work properly though, we need to go into our, uh, <laughs> whoops, we need to go into our program files. Whoops, program files, x86, TeamSpeak 3 client. So that's what we're looking at. We are inside of our 32-bit TeamSpeak folder, and we're looking for the plugins, right? So if uh, we go and look in our plugins, here you can see the test plugin. So let's just go ahead and just, let's enable this real quick and close. So now what you'll notice is that this test plugin crap, like this menu here, um, you can also go up to, uh, where is it, plugins, and now you have this little global item menu, blah, blah, blah. Uh, not extremely useful, Microphone right? Music. But, I mean, there's there are certain things that are cool about this. Um, but, yeah, I mean, we're, we're definitely going to go ahead and get more in-depth with this tutorial. But right now, I'm just trying to go slow and not confuse you, which I'm probably doing a really bad job. But, anyways... Here is a 32-bit test plugin that comes with TeamSpeak. What we're going to do is go back into our plugins and disable it by unchecking the test plugin. Now that supposedly unloaded it. So now you can see there's no test plugin crap anymore. But we have our own DLL here and we are going to drag this over here and we are going to replace the 32-bit DLL for the test plugin with the same test plugin DLL name, right? So now you're gonna go into your plugins and now if you click this, you're going to see, you know, it shows you this test plugin crap, but what we're going to do is check this. And now we are going to right click and you see it says magic Python. All right. And if you click this, it says magic Python and it shows magic Python here. Now, if you remember correctly, um, that's because we changed everything that said test plugin to magic Python in here. Now, 
what we can do is we can go to that global menu option and see these uh, PNG files, like that 1.png and 2.png. Well, these are inside of here, okay? Do you understand what, what this is doing now? So it's looking for a test underscore plugin folder. And then it's coming in here to T3, or yeah, T2, one blah, blah, and it's pulling those. So what we can do then is we can, let's scroll up to the very tippy top here. And what we're going to do is search for test underscore plugin, right? So if you read these notes here, basically what it's saying is that uh, test underscore dot or test underscore plugin dot DLL is going to look inside of a test underscore plugin folder for your icon files. So if you named the DLL file for your plugin like magic dot DLL, then you could create a magic folder with one dot PNG and call one dot PNG from your magic folder. I hope that makes sense. I, I really do. If you have any questions, post it in the comments. Come over to our forum at r4p3.net. We would be more than happy to take you in and answer any questions that you have on our form and work one-on-one -on -one with you to get you trained in learning C++. We want people that are out there developing awesome things, especially with a focus on security. So if you have any interest in security or programming, please stop over at our forum and we would be more than happy to welcome you into our awesome community. So look forward to seeing you around and hopefully this completes part two for you. And I'm, I'm hoping to get you closer and closer to developing great, uh, exciting, usable plugins. Next, uh, we're gonna get more involved with actually making a usable plugin. This was just to get your plugin uh, you know, into the, the plugins folder and give you a little bit more of an idea of the process of getting your plugin to actually load into the TeamSpeak application. So thank you very much for your time and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.